Welcome back. This is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're going to be doing the Spooky Vibes Tumblr. And of course, we have a matching coaster that we're going to be doing with it as well. As always, I will make sure to put everything I use today down in the description box below so that way you guys can shop those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. Alright, jumping right in, let's get started on our base. I went ahead and I prepped it and I primed it this key lime color by Rust-Oleum. And the glitter I'm going to be using today is also called key lime. <laughs> and to adhere my glitter down to the tumbler today, I'm going to be using my glitter glue for this process. Or you can use the epoxy method if you would like to. I just thought it went a little bit quicker seeing as when I go to do the first coat of epoxy over top of the rock glitter is when I start to add down our, the black swirls that we're going to be putting over top. So this went a little bit quicker for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a nice layer of glue on my tumbler, just making sure that there is no peaks and valleys in the glue because you'll be able to see it after you apply the fine glitters over top. Now after my glue is applied, I'm just going to go ahead and fully fill up my tumbler with my glitter of choice. Of course, working with the bottom first, then I work my way up and around the rim because that seems like those two areas dry the fastest and then fill in the center. Now I'm going to simply set that off to the side and let that dry and then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now after it was dry, I did go ahead and sweep off the excess glitter that just didn't adhere down to the glue. That's just habit. It's just what I do. You don't have, I mean, it's just one solid color, so it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> And I did give it a little spritz of my spray sealer just to make sure that my epoxy doesn't start to wick away off of my glitter. So now I have 20 milliliters of epoxy, and I'm just going to apply all 20 mLs onto the tumbler. And as you've seen, I had an extra little cup that had about 5 to 10 mLs in it, and that's for our black swirl. And after I applied my epoxy and put it onto my turner, I am going to hit it up with my torch just to pop any little micro bubbles before our swirl process. All right, to achieve my black swirl, I'm going to go ahead and take that extra cup of epoxy that I had there, and I'm going to take some black epoxy dye, and I'm going to just take a very small dab of that epoxy dye. A little bit of this stuff goes a long ways. This stuff is extremely concentrated, so just a little dab. Mix it up really good, and we are ready to go. And just in case I went ahead and put down my silicone mat, just in case I got a little too crazy with slinging my epoxy. <laughs> so to achieve this swirl, it is so easy. You're just going to take your popsicle stick and you're going to go all in the same direction with the application of your epoxy. And if you notice, I am keeping my stick at on its side. There we go. So that way I'm just using the side of my stick to achieve these swirl marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the speed of the video just a little bit. So after this, after all these little swirls I've done, I know it doesn't look like very much, but once you come through with your gloved finger and start to kind of smear it out, then you'll see that this was more than enough because you don't want to accidentally overpower your tumbler with this epoxy dye, which it could do. So just that little bit that we did is more than enough to achieve the look that we're after. So let me go ahead and slow it back down for a second so you guys can see a little bit better what I am doing. So just like we did with the stick, but with our finger, we, we're taking our finger and we are just taking that black epoxy dye and we are just kind of rubbing it around, achieving more of a wide area of that black dye. And what will happen is it will kind of mix in with the clear and give us that more of that kind of smoky swirl look as we go. And another thing I was trying to do was to make sure that I don't cover up too much of that green. So I, I still want the bigger patches of green along with this black just mixed together. And you just want to do this until you get it about how you would like it to look. All right, I really like how that looks. So now all I want to do is come through and scrape off each side of my stick, just leaving it so that way there's a little bit of black on the side of my stick. And I'm going to take it and I'm just going to very carefully make some some veining through the green. So it's going to give it more of almost like a marble look to it, I guess you could say. But again, the key to this is to scrape off each side of your stick, leaving just a little bit on the side of your stick. And that's going to give you the nice thin pieces of black like I am doing here. Now, after you get the amount of veining you would like and that is looking good to you, we're going to go ahead and move on to the coaster. But I really like how this looks. I think it's just enough of everything. 
So for the coaster, I just have a little round coaster that I've been using lately. It's been kind of my favorite thing, but I'll put it in the description box for you guys if you want to check that out. But I have, I think it was about 30 or 40 milliliters of epoxy in my little cup there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the green glitter in there just like how it is on the tumbler. And I'm going to go ahead and stir that up really good. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that into my mold. Now I don't want to fill it all the way to the top because I do want to match some of the things that I'm doing on the tumbler itself onto the coaster. So you don't want to fill it all the way to the top so that way we can do that stuff to it and still have enough room to be able to put another coat of clear epoxy over top of all that. So not all the way to the top, just, you know, almost there. <laughs> And to mimic the black swirls, of course, you'll come through with a bit of your black and just kind of swirl that throughout. Again, it doesn't take too much to achieve this because the stuff is so potent. So just a little bit and then just kind of swirl that around in your glitter. But as you can see here, after I get going, I just kind of really went at it. So, And then I put a little bit more of the green glitter into it too. So again, just kind of rotate back and forth. It, it'll, it's going to look perfect. I know you guys got this. So after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and set that off to the side and let that cure with the tumbler. And then we're ready to move on to our next step. All right, our tumbler is nice and cured. And look at this. I love it so, so much. Now, I just wanted to add just a little bit more to it. So we are going to be applying this decal here. I got this from Bear Trends Digi Designs. I've used her stuff before. Her, her stuff is so easy to use and it's always so, so cute. So it comes with the portion to be able to make your peekaboo. And it also comes with the outline needed for after your peekaboo. So I am working with a curvy tumbler today, so I'm gonna show you guys how I get my decals on nice and straight. So after I apply my transfer tape, I'm gonna go ahead and remove any extra of just everything around the decal because it could potentially be in our way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off all that extra stuff. So the way I size these is I like it to be nice and big. So as you see, it's almost to the top, almost to the bottom. There's just a little bit of wiggle room in between. So what I do is I like to let my decal speak for itself. So I lay it in the area that I want it and I'm going to start to see where it's going to start to crease, which was about in between the two O's there. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to start snipping some relief areas for myself. Then I went ahead and I put the lid on it and I'm going to use that lid to make sure that I have the top of my decal straight. So I won't be looking at it centered. This is going to be for along the top of the word spooky to make sure that it is straight from top to bottom. I'm going to show you how I hold my decal. I'm going to hold it at the very top because if I hold it along the bottom, it's going to stretch out just like that. And we don't want that. So you want to hold it at the top so that way it stays as straight as possible. Then you're going to take that and line that up with your lid and an anchor point at the bottom if you need it as well. I didn't really need that at the bottom, but if you need something at the bottom as well, go ahead and put it there beforehand so that way you know that it's going to be straight across for yourself. And I also want to mention before I continue on that Every decal is going to be a little bit different. You're going to learn what way works best for you. But I've learned with these particular decals, this way works best for me. So again, I laid down completely across the top. I smoothed just the top of the decal down, leaving the bottom portion still upright. Then I'm going to come through and apply, a, or not apply, I'm going to cut some more slits into my wording. And I'm just going to push straight down. So watch my thumb, straight down, and then straight down and then straight down. Now, when it comes to this top portion, it's a little bit more tricky because it's a little bit more curved up here. So now I noticed that the only letter that's gonna give me a little bit of issue is right where the O is above the V. So I'm gonna make a little slit in my transfer tape there, and I'm going to go along the K, and I'm going to go ahead and press all that down nice and smooth, straight down the center. You see the O is still up just a little bit, that's okay, and so is the V. And I'm gonna go ahead and smooth down the Y as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and come through and start burnishing down the O portion. So to kind of help me out with that, I'm gonna go ahead and peel back my transfer tape just a little bit. This will help relieve any tension and that should be able to get you your O down nice and smooth onto the surface of your tumbler. Now I want you guys to remember that this is just for a peekaboo, but we do have some pinstriping that we're gonna be putting over top of this. So you do want it to try to have it as straight as possible for yourself so that way your pinstriping will be able to line up as well. But again, I'm gonna make sure to come through and show you guys how I do my pinstriping as well on a cur curvy surface. There we go. 
<laughs> now before I take it outside to do the power washing, I'm just going to verify and make sure that my, my lettering is nice and straight. So I'm just going to look. It looks good to me. And I'm going to show you here again. I'm just going to kind of verify that it is nice and straight right along the edge there. See, I use that nice and straight, straight down. All right, now we're ready to go outside and put some power wash over top. So to give it that really cool bubbly look, we're gonna be using our Dawn Power Wash Spray. And we are going to be using the spray paint in Dreamy Lavender, I do believe. Yes, Dreamy Lavender. So our Dawn Power Wash is going to act as a masking agent, making our spray paint repel off of it. So wherever this is, the spray paint will not stick to that area. So I knew I wanted the top portion to keep that swirl look a little bit more open. And then I'm making sure that I'm not too close to my decal because I wanna make sure that the bottom of my decal is a little bit more spray painted than the top portion. So I'm just getting a little bit of that, those bubbles on there so that way it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a bubbly look. Then I'm gonna go ahead and come through and spray paint the whole surface. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hold on to it for a second. I'm just gonna kind of let it rotate in my hand. As you can see here, I'm not getting too crazy with getting it washed off just yet, just so that way I know that those paints are gonna stick. Then I'm gonna very gently take a water source. You can dunk it into a bucket full of water or take your hose or a faucet, however you guys wanna work it. And you're gonna go ahead and rinse off the Dawn Power Wash, leaving this really neat looking bubbly pattern on your surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that off to the side and we're gonna do our coaster as well. Now my coaster is still inside of its mold there. You just wanna be very careful not to crack that seal around your coaster. As you see, I'm just kind of lightly spritzing that Dawn Power Wash on there. And then I'm going to very lightly take my spray paint and just kind of spray along it. Again, it doesn't need too much. As you see, I'm being very gentle with the, the amounts of plumes and everything I'm doing on it. And then I'm going to very gently rinse it off with my hose. And then I'm going to set that off to the side and again, let that dry along with my tumbler. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, once we're back inside, it is nice and dry. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of this Dawn Power Wash. There is kind of some areas that are a little bit hazier than others. And I just take some rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna come through and very gently kind of rub away any hazy areas, exposing more of that swirl underneath. Now you don't wanna use acetone for this portion. It will remove too much of your paint. That's why I like to use the rubbing alcohol. It only removes a tiny portion of your paint. All right, and once you're done cleaning up your open areas that you want that swirl to be exposed through, now is the time to go ahead and come through, removing that vinyl, exposing your peekaboo. And I found with this varsity block lettering, it's easier to work at the top and then pull the decal down. It makes it a little bit easier to pull off. And with the word vibes, it all kind of came off pretty simple because it's, it's nice and thick as well. So very easy decal to work with. So I knew that I wanted kind of that almost faded look where the words kind of went up into that swirl and kind of faded away, but that's okay. We're not going to panic or anything. We'll be able to fill this in nice and fine with our pinstriping <laughs> after we go to apply it. Trust me. Okay. I know you guys got this. Now, before I do my pinstriping, I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of epoxy over top. I did spritz it down with my semi-gloss clear again, just to make sure that nothing wicks away off those paints we just applied. Go ahead and place it onto the turner, hit it up really good with your torch to pop any little micro bubbles and let that cure. And before I add my finishing decals, I am going to go ahead and remove any extra epoxy around the rim there. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a sanding. I'm also gonna sand around the bottom as well, just being very gentle around the bottom. You don't wanna accidentally go through that layer of epoxy we just did and rub away your paints underneath. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give that a good sanding on the top and the bottom. Now for our finishing touches, after we got it all sanded, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my transfer tape over the top here. And I did use kind of, it's not, it's like monochromatic, so it's like lavender on lavender kind of look. I, I really like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut those bats away off there too because I'm gonna place them up underneath after everything's all said and done. And I also printed out extra bats and made them a tad smaller to go into the coaster. So those can be, those can be cut out on their own outside of your stuff that you did here, so. Now I want this to be absolutely perfect because this is my finishing outline. I am actually going to completely cut this in half and that's okay to do that. You could even come through and do each letter individually if you needed to, 
you know, <laughs> it's completely up to you. But I went ahead and I already knew where that crease is at right in between the two O's is where it starts to get that crease going. So I went ahead and just removed that completely. So I'm going to go ahead and do this bottom portion first. I like to look at the center of each letter. And I find that if I just look at the center of each letter and line it up that way. It always lays nice and even for me around the whole word itself. So I'm going to go ahead and get that laid down. And that second O, I completely cut away from the rest of the decal and I'm going to apply that by itself. Like I said, it's completely fine to come through and do that. You know, this is going to really guarantee that it is as straight as possible for you guys. So, so don't even worry about separating it. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Now for the rest of my decal, I'm going to work on the word vibes. So I don't want to press down the letters K and Y. I'm just going to line up the word vibes and I'm going to go ahead and get that burnished down. Then I will very carefully pull away the transfer tape off of the word vibes, leaving the K and Y left to get lined up and burnished down to my tumbler. And all that's left for our decals is applying your last two little bats. You can put those anywhere you'd like. I just wanted them kind of right up underneath, which I believe is how she had it in her shop as well. Then all that's left to do for your tumbler is apply its last two finishing coats of epoxy, and it is good to go. And for the coaster, I went ahead and applied those bats that we talked about earlier. I just kind of sized them down just a little bit, and I just went with the motion of this, the spritz that happened on there. Yours could be a little bit different. You know, you could do however you would like, you know. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish sealing that down with my epoxy, because this is its final layer of epoxy, and after that cures... I like to apply these little plastic bumpers onto the bottom of the coaster so that way they don't slip around on the table. And how you apply those is you just want to clean the surface off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. This is just going to remove any oils that might be on the surface so that way our bumpers can be adhered properly. But I just do four all together, just lining them up straight across from each other. And there we go, it is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.